Hello my dear students, I am back with another lesson. The topic of my lesson is the critical analysis of the poem The Poetry of Earth written by John Keats. Before I start this topic, let me tell you, let me give you one information that this video is not a substitute for your primary textbook. It is mandatory for you all to read the textbook then watch the video as the secondary reference. Okay. Okay, so then I will be talking about the poet John Keats, then boil down my topic to sonnet, give you some information about sonnet, then we'll talk about my main theme or main topic that is a critical analysis of the poetry of earth, then talk about various kinds of themes, then give you some sample questions and also mention a summary link and this way I will end my session. Talking about the poet. John Keats. John Keats was an English poet and a romanticist. Romanticist meaning in England there was one important movement that took place and that movement is known as romantic movement where a group or a bunch of writers wrote on the themes and ideas of nature, creativity. In fact human being was an important subject for the, the writers and John Keats was one important famous writer of that particular movement that is known as romantic movement. Next talking about his style, his style is heavily loaded with sensualities meaning John Keats you know gave a rough graphic representation of his ideas. In fact all the readers could vividly, clearly imagine what exactly John Keats is trying to say. Like for example, the description of birds, the description of nature, the animals. In fact, you could, you know, you can play with your senses. That's why critics, you know, called him as, called his style as heavily loaded with sensualities. In fact, John Keats was very particular when he chose words. He scrupulously, scrupulously and carefully you know chose the words which he wanted to present it to his audience in that way he could touch our senses and could give a crystal clear picture of what he wanted it to convey to the audience or to the spectator now talking about his works he wrote several works and some of his works are Ode to Nightingale, Sleep and Poetry and Ode to Gratian Urn. The poetry of earth is fashioned upon sonnet. Now what is sonnet? Sonnet is a 14 line poem and the sonnet are, is divided into two types. Shakespearean sonnet and Petrarchan sonnet and John Keyes chose to write in Petrarchan sonnet. Petrarchan sonnet is named after an Italian poet Petrarch. It was Petrarch who initiated this style therefore it was named after his name. Okay. And a sonnet is divided into two parts that is like octave and sestate. The first eight lines are known as octave and the second six lines are known as sestate and the pattern in which it is written in two torset and it is not exactly important for you all to know about it it's just for the information I've mentioned it okay. Now talking about the main topic that is the critical analysis of the poetry of earth. Now what is poetry of earth? Poetry of earth means the song of nature, prakritiko geet, the music presented by nature. So in this poem, John Keats tries to highlight the various sounds, sounds produced by the tiny objects like grasshopper and cricket and trying to present these sounds as the natural sound of the earth through various seasons that is summer and winter. Okay, now let me read the poem. The poetry of earth is never dead. When all the birds are faint with hot sun and hide in cooling trees, a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new morn mead. Now, the first line itself says, right, the poetry of earth is never dead. The song of nature is never dead. It is always present. How? We will learn about it now. Okay. Now, when the earth is drowsy and the migrating birds are tired and exhausted due to the scorching heat of the sun, therefore, they take shelter under the cooling buds of the tree. And that particular moment, there's silence, there's complete silence. 
Now who takes the lead? Now at that particular moment, it's the grasshopper who takes the lead and sings merrily in the summer season and fills the air with his lovely voice and enlivens the atmosphere. So Jabba Jabba, you know, birds, migrating birds, gham ko tapale, tini, you know, exhaust vaira, abo shelter khuji rak bela ma, ek prakali lakataran bhaira basi rak bela ma che, ko on sa titi bela, ko li che hamro mood lai enliven gaur cha, happy ban on cha. Titi bela che, tapu ko entry ko li 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 re sa, grasshopper, the tiny object that is a grasshopper that comes hopping, that runs, moves from hedge to hedge, border to border and, you know, produces its sounds and gives you merry and lively atmosphere and makes everyone happy so kunchi season ma grasshopper on the reserve summer season and who makes who makes the atmosphere happy okay it's the grasshopper who takes the lead in summer luxury okay moving from one border hedge to hedge about the new more need in the open grassland happily merrily it's the grasshopper who sings in the hot summer season okay this is what you know in octave in the first part of the sonnet uh, john keats gives you on a brief introduction about whom about grasshopper and also the extreme summer season and also the about uh, the tiresome birds who chose to take shelter under the cooling breeze or buds of the tree now continuing the same the writer or the poet writes that is the grasshopper who is it that enlivens the mood in summer season it is the grasshopper he takes the lead in summer luxury he has never done with his delights for when tired out with fun he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed meaning it is a grasshopper who takes the lead in summer luxury okay and when the grasshopper gets tired he you know takes shelter under some pleasant weed and again you know resumes his singing with same much happy energy so you know both some beneath some pleasant weed so he's just trying to tell you what happens when the grasshopper himself gets you know tired so he takes shed shelter under some pleasant weed and again resumes his singing moving on to sestate john keat writes the poetry of earth is ceasing never. Can you see he's reiterating, he is uh, retelling you all, he's reiterating on the fact that poetry of earth is ceasing never. In the first line he's already mentioned, now uh, moving on to the state also he repeats the same line. He says the poetry of earth is ceasing never, the song of nature is never dead, it's always permanent, it is you know endless. And he writes, on a long, lone winter evening, when the frost has wrought a silence from the stove, there shrills the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever, and seems to one in drowsiness half lost the grasshoppers among some grassy hills. So what he meant is, now he shifts from summer season to which season? Winter season. And he says in winter season when your hands are cold, when your feet are cold, when you take shelter at your home and you know enjoying the warmth of fire, somewhere around you know the frost has created a silence. All the animals have taken shelter and including human beings, right? And there is complete pin drop silence and in that particular frosty silence who breaks this silence it's the cricket it's the cricket one tiny object one insect that is cricket who breaks the silence and again enlivens uh, creates warmth in the atmosphere it is the shrill sound of whom it's the cricket song in warmth increasing ever it is the cricket's voice that increases warmth in winter season and he also gives a description of a man who is almost half asleep and who considers the voice of this cricket the buzzing sound of this cricket as the sound of whose grasshopper okay he you know probably he might be asleep or he's drunk okay so therefore he's you know in that unconscious state and he's not able to identify whose voice exactly it is so he you know misunderstands or mistook 
so probably probably he misunderstands okay so he understands and he thinks that the voice of a, a cricket to be that of who's a grasshopper so in this way you know in this way he keeps tries to highlight what the importance and the permanence of nature and also tries uh, to tell the audience or the spectator that you know the various natural music produced by earth or nature is a signal or the sign of communication to human beings this is how nature communicates with us like the sound of through the sound of waterfall or through the buzzing sound of insects or to the barking of dogs okay so all sort sorts of you know possible sounds like pitter patter of rain even the sound of thunderstorm is used in various musical videos right to give you the dramatic effect so this is how we utilize what the sound of nature this is how we can connect ourselves with what nature and become a part of nature for instance i'll give you one simple example day to day life example that we normally believe that is you know jab hamro dasai auncha dasai aai pe ke bela ma ke huncha hamro jhaukuri bhane euta insect huncha hai jhaukuri karan da keri ta what we feel hey mummy papa ke bhayo हमारे दस आने थाले लु दस आयो हई क्या झाँकुरी कराने थालों ऑन द अदर हैंड एट नाइट वेन वी हियर द वेलिंग अफ फ्यौरा भाई फ्यौरा कराऊ हमें सुनो ला फ्यौरा कराओ इट्स अ साइन अफ इट्स इल ओमेन इट्स अ बैड साइन कई नराम पो हो कि मन में हमें अगेन दैट फियर रिडन डेस्टिनी विच आई मेन्शंट इन द प्रिविस् क्लास ओके दैट अकर्स इन आर हेड राइट डर पैदा होसरी मन में डर हो and so there are so many you know signals and signs when a dog barks at anyone will feel okay koi aayo ki ghar ma kukur po karanu thalyo you know this is how we communicate this is how this is how is the beauty of nature this is how we have to be one and be a part of nature through by observing absorbing everything that is around nature in this way keys is trying to highlight to you the superiority of nature the beauty of nature and you know and the eternal eternity of nature eternal sound of nature that is presented throughout the season through different objects tiny objects like grasshopper and cricket okay that is the essence now let's talk about the themes that you know keats has highlighted number 1 is nature of course right keats is a lover of nature so the entire theme is based on nature he is a romanticist so you can see the description the, in fact the entire setting is of full of summer luxury and the harshness of winter which he has presented right and the objects we he chose to use is also from nature that is grasshopper and cricket and birds grasshopper cricket and winter season summer and winter season okay moving on to the next symbolically if you see grasshopper and cricket are the symbols of hope yes keats has presented two extreme seasons that is summer and winter in the heat of summer when you don't feel like doing it it's the grasshopper who comes as hope and enlivens the atmosphere in the winter when you are completely in the harsh winter has completely you know put you down it's the voice of the cricket that adds warmth technically i'll tell you okay what happened keats john keats uh, died at the early age of 25 due to tuberculosis and moreover he did not receive fame as he received posthumously that is after death when he was alive he read voraciously you know and all the subject matters of modern politics modern history and all fictions all kinds of fictions okay but it is interest over poetry that took him and you know later he started his career in poetry and when he wrote poetry on the subject matter of nature and human being and all the modern art no one appreciated him in fact all the critics tried to put him down he was not as famous as he receives he is receiving now the kind of fame he is receiving now okay that particular moment he was going through a tough time okay but see what happens his he had that hope patience persistence and till now after his death we remember his work 
right work so what helped him move on in his life is his hope so these two extreme seasons can be considered as critics and the voice of a grasshopper and cricket can be considered as his works okay which is still prevalent now still we are reading which is still universal so what happens what is he trying to say or you know give a secondary idea is that no matter what in life we have to work hard we have to believe in ourselves work with much passion and zeal and at the end you will have a fruitful result tenacity the same as i mentioned to you before persistence and determination to pursue one's passion you should be persistent you should be determined to pursue your own passions there are so many hurdles that you'll come across in your life but at the end it's your belief self belief determination and interest that will help you keep going in life okay this is the secondary reference or the secondary idea that you get or derive from the poem that is the poetry of earth beauty yes uh, expresses beauty both in the harsh as well as the mellow side uh, mellow side of nature this you have to find beauty and happiness in everything both in harshness of winter in winter what happens you enjoy snow though, no matter how cold it is in summer season you love to have ice creams and all the cool things despite the scorching heat so you see can you see can you find beauty in both the harshness of weather this is what john keats is also trying to present to these music voices of the insects okay so the, what is the central idea central idea is the song of nature is immortal cycle of nature is endless okay as i said to you again so the title is also appropriate okay the endless uh, music of nature is produced through the cycle of season okay so every season ma you will find so many other objects creatures producing various kinds of sounds so in this way what happens this way you try to connect you connect with nature in this way you know keats is trying to highlight the superiority of nature to human beings okay nature is always superior she has you know so much to give to human beings but uh, sadly we human beings take it for granted and you know uh, try to cut trees and do all the kinds of deforestation and and that way trying to destroy our mother nature but technically or emotionally if you see and feel nature is giving us so much okay so uh, writers like john keats william wordsworth byron his shelley these writers understood and valued nature they derived inspiration from nature okay so that's why you know keats says in all his you know works he uses nature as an important uh, you know theme and he tries to tell his readers his spectators that see nature his nature has the healing power it gives you so much okay value it so the main motive of these writers is to tell the audience tell the readers about the importance of nature about the healing power of nature and the happiness that we can derive from nature so the central idea is also about the superiority of nature the song of nature is immortal cycle of mm, the nature is endless okay poetic device imagery yes you get a graphic representation of cricket okay grasshopper and also the winter season and the summer season okay so main purpose of uh, john keats is to give you a graphic representation of what he is trying to tell you you have to sit back and imagine what keats is trying to say or convey to you all okay through his works now let's do a bit of brainstorming okay you have understood the lesson right i mean about the themes about the importance of season about the importance of insects and also about how keats is trying to show you the eternity of nature now since he is talking so much about nature now let's do a bit of thinking like how to experience the beauty of nature पढ्नु त पढ्यो बुझ्यो है किट्सले पनि हामीलाई बतायो त्यसरी नै अब तर कसरी गर्नु इफ यू रिमेम्बर इन योर इलेवेन्थ स्टँडर्ड यू ह्याभ अ बुक और यु नो नट अ बुक सरी बट लेसन दॅट इज अपॉन वेस्टमिन्स्टर ब्रिज रिटन बाय हुम 
uh, William Wordsworth, right? He also talks about the morning beauty of London city. So these writers are talking so much about the beauty of nature and how to experience this beauty of nature. How? So in your day-to-day -day life, have you ever realized that how to experience the beauty of nature, which these writers are constantly talking about and have written huge textbook on the beauty of nature? Right, I'm sure after writing your board exam, you will forget this lesson. But try to remember the essence of this lesson. After a year, you will not remember about John Keats' poem, but surely you're going to remember about the essence of lesson once if you experience it. Education is not just about reading, my dear students. Education is also about trying training your mind okay training your mind to think so english literature ma padyo aaj euta story padyo grammar ek dui practice gore that's the end that is not the end end is nothing like you have to change the pattern timi haru le afuli experience garnu parcha kasari how to develop your critical thinking ule esto bhande cha he talks about nature he talks about birds he talks about you know the all the things around the beauty of nature kasari chai experience garnu and one more thing is like you all are fortunate because we all are fortunate we are living in a place like darjeeling it's fully surrounded by nature so one such thing in, in, in children i'll tell you something if you stay in some rural part of darjeeling na feel yourself to be very fortunate go how to connect yourself connecting through walking Okay, gardening, yoga, running, farming, bird watching. Are if you are a part, if you live in a rural parts of Darjeeling, you have so many things to do. Go and help your parents in farming. Okay, try to touch and play with soil. Okay, see how the birds are flowering. You can see various kinds of birds. Try to connect yourself with chirping of birds. Try to assimilate the energy which nature is trying to provide you. Likewise, if you're living in a town, okay, since there's no such open gardens and open plants everywhere, uh, what you can do is do planting, gardening, have a small kitchen garden. Okay, what happens is when I feel exhausted, when I feel tired, you know what, I, I, I live somewhere near, you know, uh, nearby Japanese temple area. So I go for a morning walk when the sky is clear. Okay, and when I see from the view from Pispa Gota, na, it's so beautiful. The clear blue sky, the white rigid mountains and the beautiful view of Darjeeling and when I inhale the fresh air, it tingles my nose. Okay, and the chirping of birds beautifully gives, you know, soothes my ears. It, it, it actually relaxes my senses. And as Abdul Kalam's father already said, right, the prayer, prayer helps us to communicate with the divine manifestation. What I do is silently sit for some time and connect with the higher authority. And likewise, my mom, when I see her, na, she loves gardening. She loves to plant. She's like a baby when she's with her plants, when she's gardening. She has a kitchen garden. She talks with her plants. And she's so happy to see that small tomatoes and small, you know, fruits when it grows at home and I can see the reflection and the beauty of nature in her. She's so happy to be around and she says that gardening is a kind of meditation for her. She sees an adult and she's trying to connect with nature through gardening and the happiness that she receives is priceless. Yes, we are all into this technology world. We are all advanced. Try to take a break from that and just try to indulge yourself and try to connect with nature. Why only forest officers have to preserve forest? Why not we common individual take responsibility and move forward and try to preserve our own nature, our own Darjeeling? No, it's so pretty. When I sit and look, I feel so energized. I want all you to experience the same, you know, thing that I have experienced. This is the first time experience which I am saying, which John Keats wants you all to experience. Kati sama padi basnu, padi hai, ab experience varne garnu jungna. Kasari, walking, take a stroll, gardening, plant, you know, various kinds of plants. 
gardening running yoga yoga does not mean all sorts of doing all sorts of postures and all that thing nothing yoga means just to try to uh, control your breath stay in posture ab uh, absorb absorb things what nature is trying to tell you try to listen to various kinds of birds the chirping of birds so the kind of happy this will actually help you to come out of your anxiety i feel most of the students now when i come across they say they are going through this anxiety problem so this part relaxing your mind trying to take a break and try to connect with nature actually helps you to you know uh, Uh, lessen your anxiety also this is what john keats and william wordsworth tries to say and those who fail to ignore, you know understand the beauty of nature william wordsworth has beautifully said in your lesson he says earth has not uh, not anything to show more fair he says dull would be he of soul who could pass by So for those person who cannot enjoy the beauty of nature or who fail to enjoy the beauty of nature their soul is actually dull okay you have to appreciate nature living in darjeeling if you fail to you know give a description of nature then that is a very sad story that means probably your soul is dull okay you have to be full of energy right now you have to be lively you have to connect yourself with nature who knows you might come up with some great ideas and write poems like william wordsworth and john keats literature helps you to develop ideas you have to act you have to build you have to believe it's not that john keats said that uh, cycle of uh, season is immortal nature is immortal you believed it you have to understand you have to go out and experience and feel it that's why you will develop a sense of introspection okay sense of introspection you will question yourself and you will develop what critical thinking teacher le banyo mo porchu mo lekchu exam pass done Mm, that is a very monotonous way of developing because i myself have experienced it that's why i am telling you all i feel that's a very you know wrong pattern of studying teacher le banyo but i feel it's a different story so i should question my teacher right and this is anything we like experience got this is a critical development uh, thinking develop got in life you have to question you you lesson padera khali hunde na ni you lesson line timile afule contemplate garu bacha dimag ma sochnu parcha tya dekhi lekhnu parcha afule experience karera you will remember it throughout your life i'll tell you that's why that's the beauty of nature try to connect yourself with nature that's why this is a little bit of brainstorming which i want you all to do aaj am re lesson sakyo sakyo aaj sir le padayo miss le padayo sakyo Mm, that's not that's a very wrong approach have a good approach uh, my dear students in life that will definitely going to help you in life throughout your life okay moving on to the next we will discuss some sample question and answers first is multiple choice question he takes the lead who is he he, he is the grasshopper number 2 being tired the grasshopper re- rests beneath pleasant weed now let's discuss short question and answer Where does the grasshopper rest? He rests beneath the pleasant weeds. From where is the shrill song of the cricket is here in the poetry of earth? It is heard from the fireplace. Long question and answer. How does Keats show that the poetry of earth never ceases? It's a long question and answer. The entire session is about that trying to show the eternity of, you know, nature or the song of nature through the tiny objects that is the voice of a grasshopper and cricket through which season? Summer season and winter season. Okay? This is a summary link which I've taken from internet just to give you for your um understanding clear understanding in this way i would like to end my session here stay motivated try to connect yourself with nature feel more study well stay inspired and i will see you all in the next class with another lesson thank you so much